to understand what is microarray, what is NGS platform, what are the uh, Oxford Nanopore, and then what is the what are the different proteomics platforms. And this is the only thing what it means here for next generation experimental systems. So system structure identification, there are various system structures identity structures that needs need to be identified such as the structural relationship among cells in the developmental process, detailed cell-cell contact configuration membrane intracellular structures and gene regulatory networks. While each of these has significance in corresponding research in systems biology. So here, in order to understand a biological system, we must first identify the structure and the system. For example, to identify a gene regulatory network or signaling pathways components, one must identify all the components of the network, the function of each component, interactions, and the associated parameters. All possible experimental data must be uh, used to accomplish this non-trivial task. At the same time, inference results from existing experiments should enable the prediction of unknown genes and interactions, which can then be experimentally verified. The difficulty is that such a network cannot be automatically inferred from experimental data based on some principles or universal rules because biological systems evolve through stochastic processes and are not necessarily optimal. Also, there are multiple networks and parameters valid values that behave quite similar to the target network. One must identify the true network out of the multiple candidates the parameters this process can be divided into two major tasks network structure identification and parameter identification so this is one of the example if you want to understand the details of systems level understanding then here you have different processes which is basically the part of cellular communication regulation and processing for example here you can see transcription translation and then you can see the signaling transduction process, then you see the metabolic activities. Now, all these things are related to some kind of a specific problem and the human diseases or the functions also, for example, metabolic uh, associated diseases are diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol level, and many more things. So if you want to study the human disease, metabolic diseases, then you need to go for metabolic network. If you want to understand, the cancer here also and some other diseases. Signal transduction is another kind of complex network activity which you can also focus on it. Then you need to understand, for example, what is abnormal regulation or aberration in regulatory activities? What are the side effects? And then wind with the off target, so drug targets. And, and then you can also identify the protein folding, misfolding, protein interactions and wrong protein protein interactions then it comes to network structure identification there are two processes for example bottom up approach and bottom down approaches here i have given the example of bottom up and bottom down approaches now it next it comes the, this is basically this is the summarized form hand drawn things here it is kind of biological complex systems which i have presented for understanding of bottom and up and bottom down approaches. Now, <clears throat> if you want to understand the, the such extensions include the development of a hybrid method that combines the bottom up and down, top down, it is unlikely that no knowledge is available before applying any inference methods. In practical cases, it can be assumed that various genes and their interactions are partially understood and that it is necessary to identify the rest of the network. By using knowledge that is sufficiently accurate, the possible space of network structure is significantly reduced. One major problem is that methods cannot directly infer possible modification and translational control. Future research needs to be addressed. Integration of data and of the expression profile, protein-protein interactions, and other experimental data. So here, this is another example. For example, a smart drug delivery, tissue engineering, lab on a cheap technology, as that is NGS or some microarrays, unconventional computing, nanoscale security based on molecular information. Now, parameter identification or optimization. So here you need to run the simulation in iterations 
or many times in order to optimize the best parameter for your system. So this is just one of the examples. But, but, but of course, you need to understand. So for parameter optimization, you can you need to think that in a simulation mode method or simulation model, parameter optimization or identification is one of the crucial tasks for the model developer or software developer. Now it comes to system behavior analysis. Once we understand the structure of the system, research will focus on dynamic behaviors of the system. How does it adapt to changes in the environment, such as nutrition, various stimuli? How does it maintain the robustness against various potential damage to the system, such as DNA damage and mutation? How do specific circuits exhibit functions observed? Then to attain such system level understanding, it is essential to understand the mechanism behind the robustness and the stability of the system and functionalities of the circuits. It is not a trivial task to understand the behaviors of complex biological networks. Computer simulation and a set of theoretical analysis are an essential to provide in-depth understanding on the mechanism behind the circuits. So now here, for example, we I am presenting the image based system biology so here what you need to have the image acquisitions then you need to have the for example the imaging the different types of image process then quantitative the characterization and finally modeling and simulation so for this you can use different softwares which are available for image processing and analysis then it comes to the major task that is simulation process so this is mother of all the modeling, which includes all the small modules or sets of modules for the entire simulation. So you need to adapt all the experimental data, all these other relevant data, and then set some kind of mathematical principles, and then finally go for implementation of some machine learning or artificial intelligence based methods for the complete modeling and simulation of the biological system. So, for example, this is one of the example multi scale modeling and simulation of pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamics, and disease progression. This is one of the finest examples. Of course, multi scale modeling is a little bit complex in terms of the computational time and uh, computational powers. Now, the simulator needs to be coupled with parameter optimization tools, a hypothesis generator, and a group of analysis tools. So, for example, here, a set of software system needs to be developed and integrated to assist system biology research such softwares are a database for storing the experimental data sl and tissue simulator parameter optimization software software bifurcation and system analysis software hypothesis generator and experimental planning advisor software and data visualization software so these are some of the things now here it shows if you want to go for complex simulation method this is one of the best example for starting from the gene set high throughput data and they go then go for cell simulation then organ simulation and then uh, there's a sorry tissue simulation then organ simulation and finally the and complete organism simulation that is the human simulation and this is one of the example if you are developing the software then this figure A is representing the relationship among the software tools. And then this figure B is basically the complete workflow and the software tools. Now, analysis method, it, this can be a lot of method depending on the application. For example, if you are going to use your approach of system biology and biopharma, the analysis method will vary. Biosensor, cell-free systems, gene regulatory, net, uh, gene network design, gene genome minimization, molecule manufacturing, pathway engineering, all these uh, applications will require different kinds of analysis approaches. Now it comes to the robustness of the biological systems. So in order to maintain your uh, health or your body to function in proper way, then it needs to be robust up to certain level. So robustness is one of the essential features of the biological systems. Understanding the mechanism behind robustness is particularly important because it provides in-depth understanding on how the system maintains its 
functional properties against various disturbances. Specifically, we should be able to understand how organisms respond to changes in environment or internal failures, DNA damage, genetic malfunctions, and meta in, in metabolic pathways. And obviously, it is critically important to understand the intrinsic functions of the system if we are eventually to find the cures for the diseases. So the one of the best examples for robustness to understand, you can understand that there was COVID-19 phase one, two, and three, but some people died in phase one, some people died in phase two, and most of the people were robust for phase one, two, and three. So this is how their system, internal system, immune system could easily tackle the entire COVID-19 effect. Now it comes to the lessons from complex engineering systems. There are, in, there are interesting analogies between biological systems and engineering systems. It works in the same way only due to the lack of biological knowledge for the engineers. They could not enter into the complex engineering systems in biological science. But and the same thing happens vice versa for the biologists due to lack of mathematical and physical and chemical science knowledge, they could not enter into proper bioengineering systems. So there is a need for both the field people, if they are interested, they need to have good knowledge of each field. For example, if the biologists want to enter into bioengineering field, they need to have very good depth knowledge of physics, of chemistry, and mathematical science. In the same way, the engineer needs to have good knowledge of all the fields of biology, for example, molecular biology, cell biology, and the biotechnological things, so they can do the work, a good work for this. So now it comes to the system control. So for example, our hand is controlled by certain internal signals, our eyes are controlled with certain signals in the same way you need to understand the as it happens in different things also that everything has certain control system which you need to or you can also say the mod modular designs so you need to understand how our system control each other for example here biochemical production technology environmental health human health then if you want to understand from molecular biology perspective, network level understanding, cell cell free systems, then biological communications, biological communities, for example, microbial consortials, biofilms, tissues, organs, the bodies, cell signaling, and then ecological populations. Now it comes to the structural stability. Of course, this is also very important whenever you design the system you need to understand the stability for example here if we are talking about biological system then chromosomal stability genome stability structural biology mechanism of genome dynamics then mammalian genome then dna repair and damage method then mechanisms of mutation then dna replication process and finally for example mitochondrial dna replication a structural function nuclear magnetic resonance nmr these this is one of the technique which will help you to visualize the complex structure of biomolecules now it comes to the control system for example i'm giving you now the signaling mechanism example for control and coordination in terms of biological signals so here you can see this is one of the pathway bacterial chemotaxis related feedback loops so there are positive control negative control and this i have explained earlier but still i'm going to explain for example feed forward loop feedback loop and then positive and negative of both the loops so positive feedward loop feed forward loop negative feed forward loop positive feedback loop negative feedback loop these are the one of the most frequently occurring control systems in biological signaling and biological networks so the same way you need to understand how the sig control system works in case of information processing in the biological system and this is one of the example here now it comes to the redundancy for example you are developing a mathematical model and simulatory system then you need to also be careful that you are not repeatedly using the molecules 
unnecessarily or control systems. For example, here P53 has been written two times and that is called redundancy. In the same way, it also happens for the control systems like feedback and feed forward loops that are redundantly present when the new people are working in system while they fill. Then this is P53 related feedback loop. But now if you want to see the simplest biological signaling pathway that is map kinase signaling cascade. So here you can see how they have written these things but this same thing can be minimized in terms of writing just from ras to raf and then raf to mec and then mec to add and finally it goes to the new transcription factor but there is no need to write so many things and you need to avoid such things then it comes to another this is basically showing the another path but you can also avoid writing so many things again and again you can directly write the MEC in, in order to show the different isoforms of MEC 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can write one small modules which can easily write all the things and in this way you can avoid the redundancy things. Now modular design of course you need to design your modules in such a way that you need to understand for example cell system and in cell, you have different systems. For example, the replication, transcription, then translation, then post-translational modification. It's, there are so many things. So you think like this is, for example, transcription is one of your module. So set, set the rules in such a way that it can easily mimic the transcription process. And that is how you can design your modules and then go one by one in each field. Here it shows modular composition, modularity in engineering, then modularity in systems biology. Then here you need to understand the component device module and the system. Now it comes to the system, system project. So this is quite common these days. The people are working on genome, proteome, proteome, and finally, the complete system behavior. So genomics data, proteomics data, and then final behavior of the system. So for the complex human diseases like cancer, diabetes, and other diseases. Now it comes the final impact of system biology. Of course, it has really broad impact in the field of system biology, uh, sorry, in the field of biological uh, science, as well as the health sector and there are a number of examples for example in the field of drug development and improving the accuracy of drugs effectiveness so this is what has enhanced the biological science and of course there was a grand role of NGS development also and then finally we conclude that system biology is a new and emerging field in biology that ends at system level understanding of biological systems. So system level understanding requires a range of analysis techniques, measurement techniques, experimental methods, software tools, and new concepts for looking at the biological system. The work has just begun, but it is not reality because I, I already mentioned 20 years, 23, four years ago, this book has been written. Of course, there has been a quite good development 15, 20 years ago, but these days there are less development in system biology because of the compatibility or background of the people who are working in system biology field. This is the only problem. That's why in the past one decade, there were not lot more development or advancement in system biology, but definitely there is potential scope of system biology. Thank you very much. Please don't forget to subscribe our channel. And also, if you want to continuously attend our classes, you can write us the email at mobashirchinom at the rate of gmail.com. Thank you very much.